I, I, then I, I say, sir, that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con content, not even one tweet. And yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I could just lied. What? Boom, roasted. Ah. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is all good. We've got more woke reporters asking dumb questions and getting completely shut down. I mean, let's be honest, you can't actually call them reporters. They're more like activists at this point. So yeah, anyway, let's get straight into it. Dana, I just want to go back. Um, you were talking about like, you obviously give a long leash to your fighters about, you know, what they can say when they are up there with a UFC microphone and you are getting into territory of homophobia, transphobia, like, is there... I don't give anybody a leash. Well, I'm saying you... A leash? I'm st like... Free speech. I control when... what people say. Going to tell people what to believe. Going to tell people... I don't fucking tell any other human being what to say, what to think, and there's no leashes on any of them. What is your question? I was asking that question. I'll move on, though. Yeah, uh, probably a good idea. You sh that's ridiculous to say I give somebody a leash. Free speech, brother. People can say whatever they want, and they can believe whatever they want. If And I don't think there's any... We had, we had, we had two gay women who fought in the co-main event. They sat on the stage with Sean Strickland. They could give a shit what Sean Strickland thinks or what he says or what his beliefs are, or what his opinions are. You know what I mean? Go ahead, what do you got? Does it not like kind of worry you a little bit that you've got someone like Dana White who has to actually explain the concept of free speech to a journalist of all people? On the on the topic, I mean, in terms of your sort of strategy currently, you're obviously taking the populist uh, pathway. Um, what does that mean? <laughs> well, ap appealing appealing to people's uh, more emotional levels, I would guess. Um, I mean, what certainly, do you mean by that? certainly, you Give certainly you tap certainly you tap uh, very strong ideological language quite frequently. Like what? Uh, left wing, you know, this and that, right wing, they, you know, I mean, it's that, that type of ideological thing. About, I never really talk about left but or right. Anyways, a lot I of people... I don't really believe in that. Okay. A lot of people would, would say that you're simply taking a page out of the Donald Trump uh, well, book. Like which people would say that? Well, I'm sure a great many Canadians, but... Like who? <laughs> I don't know who, but... Well, you're um, the one who asked the question, so yeah. I, you must know somebody. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm sure there's some out there, but anyways, the, the point say. of this the point of this question is, I mean, why should why should Canadians trust you with their vote, given, you know, not not just the sort of ideological inclination in terms of taking the page of Donald Trump's book, but what are you also, talking about? What page? What page? Can you give okay. me a page? Give me the page. You keep <laughs> in, saying in that. terms of, in terms of tur turning things quite dramatically in terms of of Trudeau and and the left wing and all of this. I mean, you 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 make quite a you know it's it's quite a play that you make on it. So I'm I'm not just sure. Wondering. I don't under I don't know what your question okay. is. Okay, then forget that. Why should Canadians trust you with their vote? Common sense. Okay. Common sense for for a change. We're going to make common sense common in this country. We don't have any common sense in the current government. You know, the guy prints six hundred billion dollars, grows our money supply by thirty-two percent in three years. That's growing the money eight times faster than the economy. No wonder we have the worst infl inflation in four decades. I'm going to cap spending, cut waste so that we can balance the budget and bring down inflation and interest rates. You'll want to be able to pay your mortgage again. You want to be able to afford rent. Then you have to vote for Pierre Polyev because I'm the only one with a common sense plan that will bring back the buying power of your paycheck. So this is exactly what happens when these woke reporters get challenged to actually explain what they mean or give some examples they can't do it because they're so used to living in an echo chamber where no one challenges their views. This next clip will actually show you what one of these echo chambers is actually like from the outside looking in. And what this woman is about to say is so delusional, it's actually funny. It goes to show just how far gone from reality these people really are. Why is that? Why is the Democratic share of the, of the Latino vote shrinking? And what I said to you when we asked the question was, Latinos want to be white. They want to be with the cool kids. They want to be 
I mean, asking Latinos all the time, and they just say, well, ese Donald Trump es tan buen negociante. He's such a good businessman. It's like, no, he's not. He had bankruptcies. But they don't want to be identified with all of those other immigrants that Donald Trump speaks so badly of, including me as a Mexican immigrant. So they're like, we'd rather, re let's be with him. But those numbers, they could cost Kamala Harris the election. It, everything that I've been saying that Latinos could push her over the top, mm -hmm. these are the numbers that could also take her down. I.e., they believe that she is a communist, that she is a socialist. There are these memes going around. See, this is what happens when you're not challenged on your views. Okay, let me break down what she said really quickly. So the only reason a Latino would vote for Trump is because they want to be white. No, it couldn't possibly have anything to do with the fact that Trump is the person they want to vote for because he has better policies or they feel like he'll be better at running the country or they feel like when he ran the country last time, they was better off. No, the whole thing for these woke liberals has to be about race. So if you vote for Trump, you're either white or you want to be white. <laughs> How does that even make sense? How did no one even challenge her on that delusional viewpoint? <laughs> so she's gonna continue believing all this crazy stuff. It's weird, it's almost like mind games or a form of manipulation. Also, I love how she tried saying people are worried that Kamala's a Marxist. Well, I mean, if you actually look at how far left her policies are, I'm pretty sure she's the most far left candidate out of the whole of the Democratic Party based on voting history. That says a lot because there's quite a lot of extreme people within that party and the fact that she's the most far left, pretty safe to say she is a Marxist. Um, in the company. Do, do, is that what hate speech you are you address? talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Right. Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, I, just a personal anecdote, like what do you do? I don't. P personally, my, uh, for you, I would see I get, I get more of that kind of content, yeah, personally. But I, I'm not going to talk to, talk to the rest of, for, for the rest of Twitter. So you see more hate speech personally? I would say I would see more hateful content in that, in that. Content you don't like or, or hateful? What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of those kinds of things. So you think if I'm, something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, is that I'm what you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm saying. Well, I'm just curious. What you, I'm, I'm trying to understand what you mean by hateful con content. And I'm asking for specific examples. Um, and if and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me. You've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more, it, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's why I'm asking for examples. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't use, I, I, honestly, you I don't. You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why, because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore, because I, I just don't particularly like it. But you actually, said you, a lot of people, a lot of people are quite similar. I, I, I only, well, well, I only look well, at my, my second. following. You said you've following. seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example, not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks. And I, well, I, then I how did you, you see the hateful content? content? Because I've been I've been using I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay, so then you must have at some point seen the you for you hateful content. I'm asking for one example. Right. And you I, can't I, give a single I, one. And, and, and I'm saying I, I, then I, I say so that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give me a single example of hateful con a content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I could just lied. What? Boom, roasted. Ah. Example. Let's move on. We have we only have a certain amount of time. Um, wow. COVID misinformation. You changed the COVID, you changed the COVID misinformation. Has rules. BBC changed its COVID misinformation? The BBC does not set the rules on Twitter, so I'm asking you. No, I'm talking about the BBC's misinformation about COVID. Ask, you know, you're in Toronto. Welcome. Glad to hear it. it's been great. Are you Canadian? Uh, of course I am. Are you part of the f***ing opposition? Are uh, you? Uh, I don't know how to phrase that. You, I mean, you got to like, oh, yeah. well, I did want to ask. You did know, you vote for Trudeau? Uh, you know, I'm not going to say. If, and let me tell you something right now. If a man says he's not going to say, like, if you ask him, oh, did you vote for Biden? He's like, well, I'm not going to say that's none of your business. He voted for f***ing Biden. Sean, so, hey, Sean, I'm glad you had great experience. So this is are, this but, is what I'm talking about, you guys. The enemy, the enemy of Canada. Sure. Sure, All right. That's what it's got to be. It's got to be. Yeah. Uh, we've got a pretty supportive gay and lesbian yeah. community in this city. I did want to ask you about something you wrote a couple of years ago. You said, if I had a gay son, I would think. I've oh, look, another another. Yeah, I'm because, saying the swamp, you guys, the swamp. You become a champion, you become a star. And, and someone let me ask model. you something. Have are you, you are you are chance, you gay? Have you had the chance no, to are, interact with a more diverse. Are you of, let me know. Are, are you gay? Can I hear? Can I get an answer? To well, the no, I'm asking. I'm, this is a part of the, are you are you a gay man? I'm an ally of the community. OK. 
if you had a son and he was like, you know, you had a son, he was gay, you'd be like, oh man, you don't, you don't want a grandkid? No problem with it. Oh man, well, you, dude, you're a weak fucking man, dude. You're like, you're part of the fucking problem. You elected Justin Trudeau. Like, with you fucking, when he sees the bank accounts, like, you're just fucking pathetic. And, and the fact that, the fact that you have no fucking backbone and, and has he shut down your fucking country and seized bank accounts, you ask me some stupid shit like that, go fuck yourself. Move the fuck on, man. I feel like that doesn't really coward. answer the question, but I did want to ask also things you said about the trans community. You said uh, this past October when they announced the Bud Light sponsorship that you'd go so hard on Bud Light in your next fight, they'll have to accept me or denounce me when, uh, when they know what, and we'll know what they stand for. Are you this still guy's like, hey, this Canadian's not that Canadian. Are you still going to use your fight time to kind of speak on that? Here's the thing about Bud Light. Here's the thing about Bud Light. Ten years ago, to be trans was a, what, a mental fucking illness. And now all of a sudden, people like you have fucking weaseled your way in the world. You are, you are an infection. You are the definition of weakness. Everything that is wrong with the world is because of fucking you. And the best thing is, is the world's not buying it. The world's not buying your fucking bullshit you're fucking peddling. The world is not saying, you know what, you're right, fucking chicks have dicks. The world's not saying that. The world's saying, no, there are two genders. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, who they could fucking school. I don't want my kids being taught about, you know, their sexual preference. Like, dude, this guy is the fucking enemy. Uh, you want to look at the fucking enemy to our world? It's that motherfucker right there asking these stupid fucking questions. Sorry, I, I, I told you UFC has to be nicer. Lance, am, Lance, am I am I still good with this? Am I did I cross any lines? Yeah. A little. What the fuck? I didn't say the f word. You just brought this fucking guy in here to piss me off. You, you just did, but uh, just to follow up, I mean, Rick. Wait, did I wait? Did I say the? Did I say it? You, you just did. No, I didn't say it. <laughs> right, right there, you did. Different oh, f word. Different word. Yeah. yeah, I'm trying to be good, man. I'm trying to be good. I do. I like the fucking gays. Here's the thing. I've never. You. You guys think I've ever shit on a gay man or shit on a gay one? I don't fucking. I like the gays. It's. It's a. It's. It's fucking freedom. We still have it in America. We'll teach you about. It. You guys don't have fucking freedom of speech. I'm surprised what I'm saying is probably gonna get fucking. I'm probably gonna get the fucking uh, Canadian government to arrest me. So I don't give a fuck who you. Fuck. I don't give a fuck what you want to do in life. But. But. Don't fucking tell kids about it. Don't teach that shit in fucking school. Don't, don't fucking push your agenda. Don't try to fucking brainwash people. Don't try to go past parents. Don't try to go up past all this shit and brainwash people, you fucking... Let me ask you about Lewandowski. Uh, initially, your campaign said this never happened. There was no video of it. Uh, you came out and said you thought this person was perhaps making it up, this reporter. Lewandowski himself tweeted saying, I never met this reporter, I never touched this, this person. Now the video shows he clearly did touch this person. Well, Whether he, or not you think it was battery me. or not. Touch. He, I don't know what touch means. Well, he I said, look, I never touched I this person. And then she says, oh, look at my arm. I mean, did he mislead you as well? Uh, in not the, at all. No, not at all. Look, uh, I didn't know we had all these security cameras all over. By the time I found out, I said, wow, this is really wonderful. This exonerates him totally. Now, but if did, it would have happened, you know, she said she went to the ground or something to the effect that she almost went to the ground, she was in pain, she went to the ground. When she found out that there was a security camera and that they had her on tape, all of a sudden that story changed. No, she that's didn't not talk true. About she it. says her story has remained exactly the same. She oh, really? was knocked a little Can bit off. Can I read off, this to you then? Yeah, that she was knocked off balance, but she remained standing. Do you, you mind ahead. if I read you her sure. statement? Yes, huh? I mean, give me a break. You know, the problem is everybody dumps people when there's a, like a sign of, of political incorrectness. I'm just going to read, if I can find it. She said she was almost she said. knocked off balance, uh, but she, she, she said she standing. was almost knocked off balance, right? Here's what she said. You want to read it or you want me to do it? You're a professional announcer. Why don't you read it? <laughs> the bottom part. The bottom. Now, that's an exact quote from her prior to seeing the cameras, and now she says, well, I better change my story, I guess. This quote says, I was jolted backwards. Someone had grabbed me tightly by the arm and yanked me down. I almost fell to the ground, but yanked was able, did you th did you was able it? to maintain did my balance nonetheless. I was shaken. Seen? Campaign managers aren't supposed to uh, try to forcefully throw reporters to the ground. Uh, she did not, no, she did not go down to the ground. No, no, She's, let me just, uh, okay, before she knows, folks, look, I'm a loyal person. I'm going to be loyal to the country. I'm going to be loyal to Wisconsin. We have to tell it like it is. It would be so easy for me to terminate this man, ruin his life, ruin his family. He's got four beautiful children in New Hampshire, ruin his whole everything, and say you're fired, okay? I fired many people, especially on The Apprentice. <laughs> but look what she says, Michelle Fields, who, by the way, she's not a baby, okay? In her own words, exactly, I was jolted backwards. Well, she wasn't, I mean, she's standing there. 
someone had grabbed me tightly by the arm, tightly, and yanked me down. She wasn't yanked down. She was like, she didn't even have any expression. If somebody in this audience get whacked or gets hurt, including me, you get hit a little bit, you go, wow, there's no, no emotion. Okay, wait a minute. I almost fell to the ground. I almost fell to the ground. She didn't almost fall to the ground. She, he, he got in her way. And by the way, she was grabbing me. Am I supposed to press charges against her? Oh, my arm is hurting. Suggested Anderson, you suggested Anderson, my arm is just killing me. It's never been the same. You've suggested you might. Excuse me. Excuse me. I didn't suggest. Oh, I, yeah, you I did. tweeted. No, you... no, I tweeted. Well, I, I asked a tweet a is a suggestion. Should I press right. charges? Are you going sure. to? Sure. I don't know. Maybe I should, right? Because you know what? She was, she was grabbing me. I saw this interview a few years ago and I've been trying to find it ever since and it's basically been buried like it's really hard to find the only reason I was able to find this is because I sent it to somebody and I went through the chat and I found it but yeah it's just another example of how the media will completely lie and try and push their own made up story and they're just betting on the viewers to not fact check it and that's what they do and if you keep telling these people the same lies over and over and over again people just start believing it I think any serious person would would also say, Congressman, that Donald Trump is a source of heated and dangerous rhetoric over months and years. I mean, even Republicans who support him and are voting for him this election have basically begged him to tone it down. So if Republicans who even support you say that you've got a problem, you need to tone it down, you've got a mayor in Springfield, Ohio, saying you guys need to tone it down because we now have bomb threats on schools in our area. There's a problem also, you know, in the general rhetoric of the campaign that <laughs> the term that is never is often criticized, but that if you want to say both sides should address. But right. Logically. Well, actually, let's let's dig into this a little bit more. And thank you for bringing this up. Um, yes, we've heard from the Springfield mayor and nobody wants uh, bomb threats or anything like that. Donald Trump and J.D. Vance have been talking about reports coming out of Springfield. J.D. Vance represents the state of Ohio. He's talking about things that his constituents have brought to him. But let's compare that to the fact that Kamala Harris in a debate last week, she lied about Donald Trump's bloodbath comments. Why did she say that? Because she wants to invoke um, a, a negative energy around the campaign of Donald Trump, frankly, to affect these undecided voters that we talked about at the top. Uh, what did she also talk about? I mean, the same, Congressman, you and I have gone Kate, back and forth on, a lot about like, fact-checking that can happen. Kate, yeah. Kate, 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 can you acknowledge that Kamala Harris lied about the Charlottesville comments again? Something that even Snopes has debunked and said is fake news, that it is wrong, that his statements were taken out of context. Those are the direct lies coming from Kamala Harris. So if you're going to talk about the invective put into this campaign that Kamala Harris and her campaign has done, trying to invoke a, invoke a negative response from voters in our country versus Donald Trump talking about issues, whether it be in a city or, quite frankly, you could bring up Aurora, Colorado, or you could bring up Denver, Colorado, that have there, been there overrun by of, illegal Congressman, immigrants There are lots of things that can be brought up, which is also if you're two. talking about lies and you're talking about comparisons, you can talk about a long list of lies. We could walk through it. I don't think it is to the benefit of voters right now for me to walk through to remind them of the lies that Donald Trump has told. Anyway, guys, listen, I'll leave the video there. That's enough of that shit for today. Comment down below what videos you want to see next as well. Anyway, I'll catch you on the next one. Peace. Mm -hmm.